Hi, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Norm, we are here at Hiller Aviation again with John Collins. And we're going to learn about your world record breaking paper airplane design. A great design starts with great paper. Now this was not the original paper that we started out with. Okay. The original paper we started out with, it seemed like a really good idea and it actually was for me. It had tiny little ridges in it. It's a kind of paper called laid paper, L-A-I-D. Okay. And it's called that because it's, it's actually laid on the conveyor belt at a little bit wet. So it, it gets those grooves in the paper from the shape of the conveyor oh, belt. Oh, that's interesting. Texture. Texture. So that happened accidentally. Um, since you're allowed with Guinness rules to use either A4 paper, which is the British letter size or international letter size, okay. or American letter size, eight and a half by 11, um, the British letter size, the international A4 size, is about three and a half percent larger. Huh. So in a distance throw, I didn't want to give up weight. Okay. So I had to get my hands on some A4 paper. We just happened to be working with a guy whose wife was still in the UK, and so she sent us this fabulous laid paper. So then the ridges added turbulence atop the wing, like we talked about with the bees' wings. And exactly. Like that so they were tiny little turbulators, and so for my throw, at my throwing speed, I could throw that plane 30 feet further than I'd ever thrown anything. Wow. Okay. And it worked, it seemed to be working for Joe, but the problem was he plateaued at about 205, about two feet short of the record. And okay. Joe Abu, the Joe quarterback Abu. that you work with to throw the paper airplane. Yeah, he will actually be the world record holder. Okay. Uh, I'm just the designer. So it's a little bit like being the race car driver, you get all the glory, but yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> a, a good mechanic. Build the car. I didn't build the car, yeah. So that ridged paper really worked for him, but when we filmed him in super slow motion, mm -hmm. what we found out was that the harder he threw, the more ripples he was inducing in the paper because of those ridges. He was using up all of his strength you know, with, with ripples in the paper. So this year, we switched over to much smoother paper. This paper is really smooth. It's a very, very smooth surface. So my throw immediately dropped 30 feet. Joe's throw immediately increased 40 feet this year. Okay. We, just by switching that's, paper. That's pretty good for, for a different sheet of paper. Yeah, it's amazing, an amazing difference. And so other than that, the paper's just normal. I mean, there's, it's the normal weight for a normal sheet of eight and a half. Well, or this is, uh, Guinness rules allow um, a little bit uh, heavier paper. They allow a maximum weight of 100 GSM. That's grams okay. per square meter. About one and a half times as thick as you might run through a, a copier machine typically. Okay. And why did you have to work with like a quarterback, a football quarterback? Well, the first thing is my arm is about 51 years old, so my shoulder was not going to be able to throw that hard. Um, second of all, working with a quarterback, these guys are used to throwing in a really precise fashion. Joe did have to change his throw a lot. He had to move his elbow in and, and not throw over the top quite as much and slow down the snap. It's really important. I worked with one quarterback who was throwing the plane so hard he was ripping it in half. Wow. All the quarterback's power comes in that last moment, right? You search for the receiver and then you go bam. And yeah. so it's a real explosive throw. It's a combination of power and precision. Yeah. So Joe worked on slowing down and retaining the power so that the acceleration was smoother and blending that with the accuracy. So you have to release it straight up and down. Okay. And you want to release it flat. Unlike the other world record planes, this plane glides across the finish line. So the other world record holders, they're throwing a ballistic design that's basically a stick with fins at a 45 degree angle and letting it do a cannonball trajectory, right. basically parabolic. This plane you throw flat, it climbs on its own, goes over the top and then hits a glide on the last third. It's a little so more it's elegant. A little more elegant. It takes about three seconds for the previous world record holder to fly 207 feet. Okay. For mine to go 226.10, it took nine seconds. Now wow. the design isn't just in the folding, but also the tweaking Aha. for the person <laughs> throwing. This is the most technical plane I've ever made. Um, because what we found out, uh, also testing in Mojave, um, we had airplanes that were going halfway down the hangar, making a U-turn and coming yeah. back. And the reason um, for that is complicated. It turns out that the faster a plane flies, the more close to the nose the airflow actually separates from the plane. Huh. And so as the plane was slowing down in Mojave, the air was adhering further back. So little differences in how the wings were shaped back here, once the air got there, it caused it to turn different directions. So when you looked at some of the flights closely, you could actually see it fly an S turn based on where the plane, the air was releasing from the plane and where the uh, wing was misadjusted. So two things, we changed the dihedral angle design. Now it's flat on the nose. Okay. A consequence of dihedral angle is inducing drag. So when it's going really fast, you want less dihedral angle, less drag. When it slows down, you want to take advantage of the stabilizing effect of dihedral angle. The air is now adhering back here, so we rake up the dihedral angle yep. back here. And it's a 10 degree difference from here to here. So you're getting different lift on different parts of the wing at different types of the flight. Can yes. I say that again? Yeah, the, the air is adhering um, further back on the wing as the wing slows down. Okay. So it's boiling off really close to the nose at high speed. It just can't hang on. And then as it can hang on further and further back, we rake the dihedral angle upward a little more to cause it to be more stable. So do you use any special tools when you're assembling this? Or are you just sitting down with a piece of paper? <laughs> I and, do, uh, I have, uh, have my dihedral angle tool right here. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> if you measure the angle from the top, this is not how you would typically measure dihedral angle, but the, um, the angle at the center of the plane 
on the top is 155. Oh, okay. means it's about uh, 25 degrees, so it means it's about um, 12 and a half degrees di dihedral angle on either side. Okay. And then at the nose, it's 165, much flatter, so only seven degrees of dihedral uh -huh. on each side there. And then I also let it taper off toward the tail. So it's low in the nose, low in the tail, high, high in the middle. It looks like the, the folds are incredibly precise on this plane. Accuracy definitely counts. Okay. And, the, and again, the tail of the plane is where the air leaves the plane last. So it has to be perfect. You notice that that looks like one solid surface back there where those wings are joined together. Yeah. That's difficult to do. You have to really practice that. I will throw away two planes before, I, you know, if I get to the folding part, get through the folding part, and that's the least little bit off. A fraction of a millimeter off, throw the plane away and start yeah. over. And because everyone throws a little differently, you have to adjust each plane for how that person throws. This is really the cool thing about this plane. Um, Joe and I, when we were practicing, I would get a plane all dialed in for Joe. He's putting it out there, 210, 215. And when I try to throw it, it's, it'll curve wildly one direction. So it really is very precisely adjusted for his throw. The way he's going to release it, he even pioneered this method for adjusting his thumb on the side of the plane to rock it back and forth, just changing the wing angle a little bit. So actually when we're practicing, I'll say, okay, give me a little more thumb up that way. I'll give it a little more left rudder here and flatten out this uh, up elevator sweep that's in the last part of the curve of the wing. Wow. So we would work with all of that to get the perfect throw for him. And then if I grab it and throw it, it's not working at all because, of course, my thumb is going to be in a different place. My release, just my throwing motion, the mechanics of my throw are different. So it really is a very personalized um, adjustment for his throw. So right. most of your designs, you, you are just folded paper. Yes. Do you, now, do you use any adhesives or glue or uh, weights or anything like that well, on this one? This is this sort of grates against me a little bit. I've spent my whole okay. career sort of railing against the tape thing. But Guinness allows, in the, in the rules, they allow a 25 by 30 millimeter piece of tape. Okay. Now, that weighs something. So again, it's a distance competition, inertia counts. So I figured I, you're kind of silly for going, oh no, no, I won't use tape, even though we weight-wise, a huge advantage. So once you start to go down the tape road, obviously- <laughs> Slippery slope. Yeah, yeah, it's a slippery slope. Now suddenly, oh, well, if I just used a little bit there, that would really help if I just use. So I ended up taking that 25 by 30 millimeter piece of tape. Guinness allows you to cut that into as many pieces as you like. I chose to cut it into 14 pieces. Okay. So there's two pieces there. There's a piece that goes across the nose here. There's another two pieces here. There's a piece there, a piece there, three on each wing, two on the tail, and then one little one right here on top, just making sure that this surface on top is perfect. And these are just reducing drag and keeping the plane compressed more tightly together. And adding weight. And adding And weight. adding a little bit of weight. Okay. <laughs> So um, let me show you guys, let's, let's get a couple of planes uh, trimmed in for you guys. Let's yeah. have a fly. Yeah, I gotta throw this. So John has kindly folded a couple of his world record design airplanes for us and tuned them in for Norm and I. And we're gonna try to see whether you or I can throw the furthest. I think it's gonna be me. I think it's gonna be me. Yeah, what a coincidence. Always, this is the way it always works, right? All right? It always ends up in tears. Got the nerves? Got the nerves. Yeah, cool as a cucumber. You say that. Cool. I've never seen a cucumber sweat so much. a cucumber. Am I sweating? Yeah. I don't see sweat. Yours, yours, no, yours went down right over there. Behind the counter. It was 10 feet closer to you. <laughs> <laughs>